Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to presenting some work relating to the modeling and analysis of fluid jumps in NGB2. Um, I am not a material scientist, I'm a electrical engineer, so I will show you how we tend uh, to use the MGB2 bulk for application. It's a collaboration between several universities, University of Saarland in Germany, uh, Chibor Institute and Ashigaga University in Japan, and also University of Caen Normandy in France. So first of all, uh, as you may have seen yesterday in the motor session, the HTS superconductor and cryogenic technology can increase the specific power on the power train efficiency for aircraft. Actually, this is the main challenge for uh, aircraft application, or for, uh, for uh, mainly for electrical propulsion. Uh, also, one of the main drawbacks of the superconductor is the cooling. So you have heard that the liquid hydrogen can be either an auxiliary or primary fuel uh, that can overcome the, the cooling obstacle of FTS. In our lab, we developed some flux modulation machine. You, you, you see one of them yesterday. I will go in more in, uh, in detail in the presentation while we are looking for bulk. So this was a, a project called Resume that is ended in the, uh, 2019. Uh, we developed a 50 kilowatt, 5,000 RPM machine at the, at the temperature of 30 K, and the, the active mass was about uh, 50 kilogram, so 10 kilowatt per kilogram. Um, and, uh, sorry, one kilowatt per kilogram. Um, the, 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 the machine is uh, composed of two main parts, so there is the, the uh, HTS coil that, that is made at the, at the current time of uh, BISCO tape. And this is a fixed part. So this uh, DBISCO coil is used to create a background field up to several Tesla. And in this background field, we place some bulk. So at that time, it is YBCO. And, and the, the main role of the bulk is to screen the magnetic flux density so that we can obtain a modulation of the flux and this modulation is used and seen uh, on the starter side, that is a conventional uh, copper winding, to create the back EMF uh, that we, we use for the machine. You can see some picture here. So uh, the starter is more or less conventional, so this is a copper windings uh, with a reduced thickness of a flux return yoke. You can see the uh, six double pancake uh, BISCO coils. Uh, we use this because of the price of the BISCO at that time and, and, the, and the budget of the project. And you can see the bulks that are on a rotating part. So these bulks are more or less eight centimeters in diameter. So this is really huge bulks. And at that time, these were the, the most powerful uh, superconductor we can use in the machine. For now, uh, there is a new project. It's, it's a kind of update of the, of the machine. So this is a kind of update of the project. So we want to uh, move on the power to 200 kilowatts uh, for the same speed, the same design. So on the same um, mass, uh, active mass of the machine. So first of all, we remove the uh, flux uh, uh, return yoke. We change from air cooling to liquid cooling. But then also we changed the bulk. We have some drawback uh, with, the, it, it was a multi seeded bulk. And of course the performances of the bulk is not the same as a single uh, uh, monodomain crystal. So this reduced the performances of the machine and we switched to a single grain YBCO bulk, a large one, so almost 80 millimeter, uh, uh, as I mentioned before. And we have to machine it to obtain a trape trapezoidal shape that is more convenient or that produces more power for, for the machine. These are the main uh, change concerning the machine. What, what I can say here, because I didn't spoke yet about uh, uh, MGB2, that for machine, we need typical shape that are not conventional. So have you seen here, we, we need to machine the bulk and this can make degradation and cracks and this is not um, maybe the, the best solution for, for the application. So what about MGB2? MGB2 is 
at that time quite cheap on lightweight. So compared to uh, Repco Sambor, there is a factor of uh, a three on, on the density. Um, we think it's an easy uh, manufacturing material, so we can build complex shape, and especially using uh, spark plasma sintering. This is not the only method, but this is one we use uh, mostly in, uh, with some colleague in France. You can see uh, on the on the bottom figure, these are not MGB2, but th these are ceramics that have been built uh, using SPS. So you can see how complex the shape should be and what we can go for uh, MGB2 sample. In a recent review um, from Remy Dorje, we compare the performances in, in, a, in machine of several uh, typical material we can add as a bulk material. Of course, the, the YBCO is the best one, but you can see some challenger uh, that are um, iron arsenic on MGB2. So in the, in the range of uh, 2.5 applied field, that is almost the optimum we can produce in typical machine because we have a, a, a huge diameter, uh, MGB2 is a good challenger. This is what I will uh, go on uh, with my next slide. So since if, if you remove the uh, problem of the temperature, um, then you can plot and compare uh, the, the material in a reduced temperature scale. This is not often uh, done, but we have done this for comparison purpose. And we have compared some uh, MGB2 material, the, it will be the, the black one, some YBCO by infiltration growth, some YBCO foam, and also some uh, iron-based superconductor. Again, if you plot this compared to a reduced temperature, uh, YBCO even at low field or two Tesla background field, the, the performance are uh, better than other. But the MGB2 is still a good challenger. So this is why we are focusing now on MGB2 potential for application. But on the right side figure, um, there is one drawback currently for MGB2. Um, mainly the irreversibility field is quite low and we will see later that the, it can change uh, the performances. So this is a, sim this is a simple uh, numerical result where I compare just two things. Either a GCB a current density of the MGB2 with the I uh, zero field uh, critical current density, so the blue curve. And the second one, that is a very l a low um, critical current density at zero field compared to the first one, but with the higher irreversibility field. And what we can see on the uh, field cooling process on the right figure, so it is not important to, have, to obtain high GC if you cannot uh, increase the irreversibility field because at the end, the magnetization you can reach in the sample uh, is bigger even with the, the green curve here. So this is important for uh, people who make MGB2, not focusing on GC0, but also increase the irreversibility field. Um, at, at that time, the, the performances of MGB2 just for field cooling uh, magnetization, uh, we have some, the people have, have uh, made some records. For example, in uh, 2013, the, the keep from uh, Fush uh, obtained uh, 5.4 Tesla in, at 12 Kelvin for a single bulk, uh, 8 millimeter thickness and 20 millimeter of diameter. Uh, then the, the team of uh, Professor Neto at uh, Morioka, they obtained a 5.6 in a stack of uh, two bulk with a 28 millimeter, but they expect 6.6 uh, .6 Tesla uh, magnetization without flux jumps. So we will see later on what are these flux jumps. And uh, we, uh, with the um, uh, Baldica from Romania, we have tested some MGB2 with some uh, doping material that you can see uh, here. And we stacked together six pellets of 20 millimeters, and it was published in uh, 2020. Uh, the, you can see the curve here. Uh, the, the curve, for example, the, the black one uh, with, the, with the straight line, 
we obtain um, a remanent magnetization of four Tesla, but if you go to if you continue to decrease the applied field, you can see that the magnetization reach a value of uh, 6.8 Tesla almost. So this is very uh, interesting value for application. We are not focusing only on the remanent field, but what can produce the bulk himself, so the magnetization, even if the apply field is down to a negative value. So what about flux jumps? You may have seen some of them on the pre previous figure. This is not the same figure. So flux jumps are uh, magnetothermal thermal instabilities due to the low thermal diffusivity and heat capacity of soft superconductors. So MGB2 is one of them because we use this superconducting material at low temperature than YBCO, for example. But if you use YBCO Repco sample at 4.2 Kelvin, you will see also a lot of flux jumps. Um, on this figure, I have shown the, uh, a big pellet we have bought from Edison Company. It's a magnesium reactive liquid infiltration method, so they can produce complex shape and big samples. And at that time, we, we compare the magnetization curve from different temperatures, so from uh, 30K almost, uh, 25K, and uh, more or less uh, um, uh, uh, 15 Kelvin. Um, when there is a, a drop back of the magnetization, this means uh, we lose all the magnetization, and this is a flux jumps. So you can see, I will focus just on the black curve, depending on the uh, sweep rates, so 0 0.01 Tesla per minute to 0 0.005 Tesla per minute, um, we can see a lot of flux jumps, and this is uh, dependent of the um, uh, sweep rate of the magnetic field. And for example, for reproducing this uh, uh, um, black curve, it leads almost two days because of the sweep rate. So it's a lot of helium consuming, time consuming, and so on. So if you want to see the performances of your bulk, if flux jumps occurs, you never reach these points. So you will stuck here or here, so you, you, will lose, you will lose the performances. So the only way at that time for doing this is to reduce the sweep rate, but if you use a big uh, uh, liquid helium coal, uh, coil, uh, then it's a lot of money for making this uh, drop field. So what have been done concerning the flux jumps? Uh, I can mention one study of uh, a Mexican uh, team, so Romanero, Salazar, and, and Howell. Uh, they, they show for um, a semi-infinite slab, so it was a 1D quasi-static approach, and they want to uh, modelize the flux jumps of this 1D uh, slab. So they compare the experiments that he re represented with the, with the red curve, uh, with a, an analytical model. So you can see with some fitting parameters that they were able to reproduce the most, uh, the, the behavior of the, of the MGB2 uh, flux jumps uh, at a different temperature. More recently, in 2017, there were a study of uh, two Chinese people who were working on, on the modeling of, of, uh, of a bulk. So in that time, it was a finite element modeling in 2D axisymmetric model and a Trojan study. So they start from, uh, it was a, f a, field cooling, a zero field cooling magnetization. So they start from zero uh, background field, increasing the field and increasing, so making this uh, typical uh, hysteresis loop. And you can see, for example, where the first, when the first flux jumps occur, so it's, the time is called TA, uh, you can see either the uh, distribution of the magnetic field inside uh, the bulk. So you can see that there is a penetration of the magnetic field inside. But when the flux jumps occurs, all the magnetic field inside the sample is equal to the applied magnetic field. This is around 1.5 Tesla. So when you lose the, the, when the flux jumps occurs, there is no magnetization and the field inside the bulk is strictly equal to the field applied uh, by, by the external coil. What is more interesting here, uh, using this study, 
you can also see the temperature increase. It was not possible with the previous model. So since it's a complete finite element model coupled with thermal problem, electromagnetic, electromagnetic problem, you can see that you have a huge rise of temperature when a flux jumps occur. So each of these temperature increase uh, correspond to flux jumps around this hysteresis loop. So they study more deeply. Next slide, please. They study more deeply uh, all the um, parameters that influence the flux jump. So as I said before, uh, the temperature, uh, because it reduced the specific heat for a, for a fixed um, sweep ramp rate of 0 0.05 tesla per second, you can see the in in you can see the influence of the temperature, so from 5k to 20k. So at 20k there is no flux jumps, but with this study also at a at a fixed temperature of 10k, they study the influence of the sweep rate, and this was not possible with the the previous model from the the Mexican uh, group. So you can see that you can obtain very strange. Of course, this is purely modeling. Uh, you, you can see that um, you can see very strange magnetization loop due to flux jumps. And now, no people who are trying to make a uh, trap field record, they are focusing on uh, pulse magnetization because this is the most convenient way for application. Don't forget that we are, of course, I am working more on application and some people work also on the application. So this is not the case for the motor I showed you before since we use a field cooling method, but most of the people work now on a pulse spin magnetization and I'm working on two. Uh, there are a uh, new um, approach for uh, making a high crop field using pulse spin magnetization in MGB2. First of all, you can see here, uh, it's a two, two Cambridge uh, publication you can see uh, an MGB2 with an encapsulate head. Um, they try to make uh, two different setup. The first setup has no cover on the top. Mainly, this is the main difference. And the second setup has um, a, a, a copper cover on the top. Uh, and the, there are some cutting on the, on the cover to reduce the induced current because the, the, the main role of the copper here is to uh, give more stability to the bulk. But you know when you make copper in a pulse magnetic field, you have some induced current. So to remove this induced current, you can see some cutting on the, on the top of the encapsulated head. And this is a, a very recent work. On the other hand, uh, Sentiani and Mark Hansley, another colleague, work on uh, how to model um, uh, composites of MGB2 either with copper plates, so you can see here uh, it's a ring MGB2 bulk with a copper plate in the middle, one of the bottom and one of the top. And also the, to increase the magnetization of the center, they place an iron rock, so this, this can increase even more the magnetization. So the magnetization, of course, with MGB2 is quite low, around 2.5, maybe 3 Tesla. So the, the contribution of the iron uh, uh, is not negligible in the range of two Tesla. So this is the kind of setup we, you can see right now. So this is purely to avoid the flood jumps. So what I want to show you here, what are my contribution for this talk? We, we made some uh, numerical study. Uh, it's a parametric study with several potential configuration. Uh, the bulk we study for now, it, it is a, a 30 millimeter bulk in diameter and 10 millimeter high. We use a, a, a low temperature of uh, 10K, even if it, it may be not the, the, the temperature for most of the application. This is the temperature where the, the, there is more flood jumps. And what we did, we chose two parameters. One parameter is related to the thickness of the copper plates we can place inside the bulk. So we, for the same height of the bulk, we cut the bulk and place inside it a copper plate. And there is also another parameter that is related to CB. 
CB uh, is the location of the plate from the bottom to the top. When CB equals uh, minus 0 0.5, it means the, the plate is on the bottom. On the contrary, plus 0 0.5, this is completely on the top. So concerning the thickness, we start with the 0 0.2 millimeter thickness of copper, 0 0.33 and 0 0.5. Um, and we plot the magnetization. It's a, uh, there is a wrong um, interpretation of the sample. It's an uh, average magnetization in the sample. Uh, versus the uh, applied magnetic field. So it's not a zero field cooling. We start at uh, four Tesla and we make again this typical um, loop. You can see that uh, with this thickness, uh, we cannot remove the flu jumps. So uh, if we want to remove the flu jumps, at least we, we need to switch to a thicker uh, plate of copper. So for example, 0 0.33. And if you look, so the purple curve show no flu jumps. And uh, it corresponds to a location of 0 0.5. So as I've mentioned before, if you want to remove flu jumps with such a thickness plate, you need to place it on the top of the bulk. And I, I didn't talk that before, but the cryocooling power is on the bottom. So we, it is connected to a cryocooler here. And we assume some radiation loss as a cryostat from the surrounding surface on, on the edge and on the top. So if you want to remove the, most of the flux jumps, you, can, you may start to put the plate on the top. And of course, if you increase more and more the, the, the thickness of the copper, then you can completely remove uh, the, the flux jumps. Then we start something different. We start to uh, replace the copper with uh, something uh, less conductive. So for example, here we try uh, aluminum, but I guess it would be the same with stainless steel or other material. So as we saw before, the, the best location were on the top. So even with this location on the top of the bulk, by increasing the thickness of the bulk up to one millimeter, we were not able to uh, suppress the flux jam. So it means again that you may use a very conductive material to uh, suppress the flux jump, so copper should be the best solution. Then we also try to another configuration. In this configuration, we use a ring inside the bulb, so it's somehow complicated to cut MGB2 sample in such a way. But as you may see here, even increasing the thickness of the copper you cannot totally suppress the, the flux jumps. What we can see again is that so CB equal minus 0 0.5 correspond to the ring at the center of the bulk and plus 0 0.5 correspond to the ring at the, on, the, on the outer diameter. Uh, it is better to place this copper ring on, on the surrounding uh, diameter here to suppress the flux jumps. If you do this for a one millimeter thick copper, of course, uh, so depending on the location, there are still some flux jumps uh, if you place just a copper, a copper um, a cylinder at the center. And since you remove some uh, MGB2, you can see also a decrease of the average magnetization. So do not forget all the MGB2 you remove, you will lose also some magnetization in your sample. So what we can say here better is the ring around the sample. As, as it was previously mentioned, but I want to share the, the results here with, with you to be more uh, uh, clear with what we can do if you change the bulk diameter. So if you start from a 30 millimeter diameter to a 9 millimeter diameter, this is a scale value. This, are, this is not the, the rough value of the magnetization because again, re reducing the size, you will reduce the maximum magnetization. So this is scale to the radius, uh, to the square of the radius. Um, it is better to produce a um, small sample in diameter and the same for the height. So it's better, in order to remove the, the flux jumps, it's better if you reduce the size. So basically you should produce not so big sample. If you want to produce big sample, that you have to think to stack some copper in between to increase the magnetization and to avoid uh, the flux jumps. So then this will be my, my 
uh, final slide. So um, to study this um, monetization loop, uh, next year we will have a new setup that we will never use any more liquid helium because, as I said before, it's a, a huge uh, price when you have to pay the, the lot of liter you, you use, you consume. So we bought a cryogen-free magnet. So the performance of this magnet is a plus minus five Tesla. So you can, you can make large loop, uh, magnetization loop. But the main advantage is that we have a large bore so we can test sample up to uh, 12 centimeters if we uh, take into account the sample order and so on. And inside the bore, uh, we, are, we, we, we bought also a, a 2 watt at 4K facility, so it's a powerful cryo cooler, so we, we can test a lot of sample. So please send us promising sample, MGB2, RMS, whatever, or come to visit us in Nancy, and we can use this setup uh, to make some new uh, trap field record or magnetization study. So thank you for your kind of attention. Thank you for your talk. Uh, can you have some idea about the influence of the of the Jones of the thermal uh, conductivity between the copper plate and the superconductor? Because I think it should be important. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. Uh, at that time, it uh, it hasn't been studied, so of course we we can study this with the help of a finite element. But the b the better way should be to make more experiments. So at that time, since we do not have yet the new cryogen free magnets and we do not use uh, helium anymore, we have to wait a little bit more, and then we can study such interface. Uh, how we can, what is the minimal uh, rudeness of the sample of the plate and so on. But we can do this with the finite element model, but you, you have a lot of parameters, at least for this, so many thermal influence and so on. If you need to model the junction, you, you need to make more experiments to have the, uh, the, the model in your uh, finite element software. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I was a little late, so I probably missed something. Uh, I will watch the rest from the from the web okay. And regarding the real samples, and when you prepare the real samples, copper plate gets some sort of affected chemically during sintering process. And what kind of properties did you assume for the copper layer? So do, do you assume that the sample is built within the copper plate? Because in my case, it was just an additional uh, material after the sintering and manufacturing process of the MGB2. In that case, um, what is the interaction between the copper and the two? Um, I mean, f physically, I, I yes. don't know. You have not studied that. Sorry? You have not studied that? No, that no, no, no. Okay. Do, do you have an idea how to relate your findings to the uh, MGB2 wires? Mm. Yes, sure. So for MGB2 wires, it, it is relate. I'm not sure if there are some fluke jump issue. For, for now, what I, I know for MGB2 wires on cables, the main issue, of course, we can make uh, small filaments, but um, the resistive matrix is still up. So there is a resistive matrix. So uh, for now, it is stable. But then the problem is from the AC losses. So if we aim to use these wires for uh, stator windings, for example, or motors uh, application, the main issue, even for cable, uh, AC cable, the main issue is more related to AC losses. And we need to increase the resistivity matrix because all the filaments are most often uh, coupled together. So from, from my point of view, in the case of uh, uh, wires, uh, it is more a uh, point of view related to AC losses than flux jumps. So the, the, the in, in this study, the flux jumps are uh, uh, only occur uh, by the, when you have very, uh, basically it's related to the heat capacity. So if you compare the, the um, uh, um, magnetical uh, time diffusivity, uh, the magnetic diffusivity and the thermal diffusivity, there is a ratio where uh, you can have some flux jumps, but this ratio is not very clear, above one if you, pl if you plot the ratio. So as we see here, it is not only a question of ratio, there is also a question of, si of side of the sample, 
and you cannot make uh, a very simple model for that. So this is why we use the, the numerical modeling. So the flu jumps occurs from the variation of the specific heat, so the, the, the um, temperature variation of the specific heats, and this is why uh, we can see some flu jumps. And for the second question, Yes, for so outer metal. So we, we did the ring uh, on the outside. It correspond. I, I show it before. So it, it correspond to um, uh, the study we we did with the ring. So the the location of the ring change from the inner to the outer, and and the best solution for what we can see from the modelization point of view that uh, you need to place the. Uh, the 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 metal on the outer ring of the of the MGB2 bulk. So, thank you very much for your answers. Thank uh, you.